Oh, hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with kissandlog.com. I got a special package here, I think. I'm not even sure what it is. We're going to have to open it up and take a look, okay? This is from Texas Instruments. So, TI, you know, people call them, um, they are a big, gigantic manufacturer of electronic components. You guys may know that. They have bought a lot of other companies and a lot of good companies. One of them, a long time ago, was Unitrode Electronics. Unitrode was like the guys in power. Like they were the ones that made the, look, anti-static uh, foam, of course. More, oh my gosh, holy cow. Oh my, this is a bonanza. I, I didn't know it was it. Okay. Okay, there's, well, I knew there was gonna be an evaluation module in here, but I had no idea. These guys are going to be so awesome and send me everything I was asking for. I sent them a kind of a wish list and I said, hey guys, I, I'll put these on my channel and oh my heck. Okay. I might have to, whoa, might have to take a second and look at these. Okay, look. Oh, look at that, man. I'm pretty good stacking. That one's upside down. And there's a big boy in here. All right, ooh, that's got some girth. That's that's so heavier. All right. I was really hoping for these. Um, so there's a JAT audio collaboration. You know, you know JAT, John Audio Tech. Um, <laughs> I know a lot of people on this channel are like, like bugged with me. Because I started to do a collaboration where I was gonna build a power supply. And I've done a bunch of videos on the PFC converter. By the way, they, this is typically the way they come. There's always some anti-sac foam on both sides of the package. There's a little manual here telling you, you know, your kit guide, where you can download documentation and so on. And see, there's the other piece of foam. That's just typically the way these boxes are done. And then you, you get your card, right? I just touched something. I, I know I'm gonna I don't have any static on me because I'm static free. Anyway, uh by the way guys, evaluation cards are usually less static prone just because oh, ho, 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 ho. all right. Wow. I'm just looking at this because I'm like, man. They do such a nice job with their eval cards. I mean, just really nice job. Now, I'm gonna show you a close up of this, but basically an evaluation card is just that. It's for engineers like myself to look at a circuit, and it might be just because we're evaluating the control chip where I'm trying to find it. Um, it's on here somewhere. There might be two of them. It might be this guy or this guy. You can't see him from there. I know that. <laughs> but they're small. That is kind of the point. And then look at this. See these little plastic spacers they put on them? So that way when you put it down on the mat or the board, you know, it's protected. You're not going to squish the pins down here. And because of the tall components, you have these high rise. So the same thing. You're not going to damage them. So you can flip them over either way, right? So... Well, we're going to get to these guys. So this guy here, if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to have to look it up. It has a UCC 25600 EVM. That's this evaluation card. That's what it's called. But it has that chip on it. And so it's an evaluation card for that. Uh, obviously, there I can see a transformer here. I'm guessing this is the inductor. Well, you know what? I've got, I got, I'm just taking a lot of guesses on this because I got to look at the schematic on this. I'm looking to see if there's a PFC front converter on it to feed this guy. I don't think there is. So this guy is probably expecting 380, 390, 400 volts, something like that. And then it is essentially, I think this one's going to be like a half bridge, might be a full bridge. Okay, I see two heat sinks here. You can't. I'm going to show you a close-up of this, guys. Don't worry. And um, there's some... Um, 
I can't remember which ones are on these. I think these are six. Silicon, okay. It's really exciting. So besides GANFETS, which is the new, you know, I've done some videos how GAN is a new upcoming uh, transistor, the new FET that's taking over, GANFETS, gallium arsenite. Um, the other one is SICK. And, and the silicon carbides have been out, I think, I think they might have, they both came out similar times, maybe, but the six or the silicon carbides, I just call them six, SICs, um, they've been out, they, they, their prices on them kind of came down to more affordable region, a little quicker than the GAN fits, but GANs have too. Anyway, sorry, I think these are the uh, silicon carbides, maybe they're GANs, um, but they're on their own heat sink. They're on these little daughter cards that are plugged in this board, and it is so cool. It is. All right, guys, I just want to jump in for a minute. Um, I was kind, of, I was super excited about this, so I just went off on a tangent. I'm gonna bust in here and um, show you this card, okay? But first, let me show you the schematic because I think that'll help you understand what's going on in this card. Now, so this will be. The PFC converter I've been for John Audio Tech, this will power this. So what it's great for is a PFC converter takes line from United States or you know other places in the, in the world. It goes from basically 120 to 240 and takes that voltage and makes you know high voltage, like high DC voltage, 400 volts, 380 volts, something like that. And then, and the reason it goes that high voltage, well, I've done a bunch of PFC videos, talked about that, but essentially we just have to boost. It's a boost converter. So boost high voltage DC. Then these converters, these resonant converters, which I, for years, I, I have to admit, I was not a fan of resonant converters because resonance happens, you know, when you get the L and the C balance, you get into resonance and you're like, whoa, but the problem is, is with input voltage changing from say 120 to 240, 2x change. And then really you want to go down to 85 volts and up to 265 volts. So it's more than 2x change. And then if your load is also changing, it's hard to keep that resonance going. These converters, these LLC converters are magic. They've been around for a long time, but because I think the PFC converters have made this big change, where now you're getting this regulated DC voltage in, now they don't have to worry about that. Now, the, now the only changes are in the load. And the brilliance, you know, the amazing thing with the LLC, instead of just the LC, there's two inductors and a capacitor. And so essentially you get two resonant peaks with a band between them. So now you can be resonant between this band. Pretty cool. I'm going to, uh, you know, it's KISS analog, right? I'm going to keep it simple. This is like the most, uh, it's one of the most, uh, I got to say it's one of the most complicated converters I've ever worked on and done. I've done a couple of these, you know, a few of these by now. But guys, uh, other converters I've done have been essentially, you know, not simple, but after by the second one, they're becoming more simple. And these guys, here's the thing. There's a way to make them simple, okay? When I first started in SEPIC converters, is before, it was, they, they were patented, but you had to wait 20, 25 years for the patent to wear out. Now there's all kinds of information on SEPIC converters. But when I did my first one, the patent had just weren't run out, and there's very little data on them and so i had to kind of figure things out for myself and and i was able to do them and i did you know some nice converters and now all the data's come out i'm like oh that's cool i should have wrote a book like i keep on thinking i should have <laughs> but anyway so here's the thing is now these llc converters are out and you know, I'll probably write a guide for the members of the channel for my uh, Patreons. Um, you'll see it on the video. I'll have different videos yet to follow through, but I think I'll just write a 
guide, put it all in one spot. Here's your PFC converter. Here's the LLC. Here's how you design it. So these eval cards are awesome because we can look at signals, we can learn, we can see how things work, we get a feel for it. We're like, oh, that okay, that's what's going on. We can change the input voltage, the output voltage, the load, that kind of thing, and you can just watch things. So eval cards are amazing. And companies like Texas Instruments will send them to engineers like myself because they're hoping that we will get to know them, we'll get comfortable with them, and we'll use them on their designs. And so their little control chip, with all this stuff going on, that control chip is really the thing that they're trying to sell. They're trying to say, hey, see? And they have a they have a bunch of control chips that do these things. This is one of them. And this is one I picked out because I think it's a really good one. It's, it's one that's had a lot of attention, okay? So, sorry, I'm just excited. I'm jabbering on, kind of geeking out here. Um, so happy they send this to me and you know if i have them sent to my company that i'm working for it's usually not a big problem but now i'm saying hey i'm just this youtube guy you want to send me an eval card <laughs> and they're like sure so they're awesome so texas instruments thank you very much again i really appreciate this and i think our viewers will love this thing so i'm going to show you some close-ups of the board but first, let's look at the schematic so you kind of see what we're talking about, okay? Hey, guys, here's the schematic. It's figure one, UCC 25600 EVM. It looks kind of busy, right? Let me just kind of point out some things here. This input circuit right here, 375, 400 volts, okay? That's our input. And then we have our transformer, and we're going to convert that voltage to our output, which is over here, okay? So these transistors right here are switching on and off through this magnetic. And so that L and this C, okay? This is the L and this is the C. So that LC conversion uh, gives us resonant, you know, conversion circuit through that transformer from primary side to secondary side, okay? And then on secondary side, to rectify it, we have these diodes, which can be synchronous FETs, but it looks like we're using diodes on this guy, okay? And then we have our LC filter output. That's this guy right here, our LC, okay? And then that goes to the output. So when you just break it up and look at it in these blocks, it's a little bit easier to see. So it goes from input to output through the transformer. And we're switching through these FETs, okay, to these to get the switching axer. And basically to convert DC voltage here, these guys convert it to AC, right? And they what makes it soft switching or resonant is this LC filter here. And then we have a sine, you know, essentially a sine wave come to this transformer. And then on the other side of the transformer, it's a step down to 12 volts. And this LC filter here gives our output bulbs. So there's another way to look at it. Okay, so now if we look at this big part down here, that is a control chip. He's the one that's uh, telling these guys to switch on and off right through this transformer. So this will transformer here drives these gates it's a gate drive transformer so he's telling them what to do he's also being powered by this circuit okay we'll talk about that in another video so he's powered by that circuit coming off the transformer so he's feeding himself and he's talking through this gate drive transformer so that way he's isolated from the high high side drive this is the high side this is the low side okay and then on the other side, the secondary side, we have this circuit right here that is looking at the voltage, going through the optocoupler, driving this transistor to keep the uh, feedback. So that keeps it regulated, right? And then there's this circuit right here that's kind of helping out with that stuff. He's kind of a, 
uh, logic circuit. We're, we'll talk about all these things, but you just break down the circuit to these different functions. Makes it a little bit easier to see, right? All right, let's go look at the board. All right, guys, so here is the card. And let's kind of get familiar with the The input is right here, 375 to 405, it looks like. Uh, volts DC, here's our input capacitors. Over here is our output connector, 12 volts, 25 amps. That's pretty awesome. And check out these little guys here. These are meant for... These are meant for oscilloscope probes. Okay, so uh, now if your scope probe doesn't fit that, which I don't know if mine will, you have to spread them out or probably spread them out will work. But anyway, so it's nice to put test connectors like that. And you see all these other test pins? There's test pins everywhere, okay? You see them? Now, even on the other side, I'll hold it kind of like this so you can see how they protrude. So you can see uh, it's fairly easy to clamp onto these. I mean, that is fairly easy, okay? So backside, there's not a whole lot, but when you look a little closer, it's hard to see with the camera here, but this chip right here is that control chip, which is really run the whole show. <laughs> it looks pretty simple, right? But yeah, that's it. This might be a gate driver current sense, not sure. And I think an op amp chip. So, but yeah, not a lot on this side of the card, right? So they try to put everything on this side because that way you can probe around and check things out. But the control chip also, see it's right here. Okay, when I flip it over, it's right up here. So it would have been kind of nice probably to have it on the top side up here because it looks like there's room, but a lot of through hole parts, so it's easy to probe things. Um, you'll see these jumper wires here, the yellow one, the brown ones. That's because it's probably only a two layer card. And so they're adding a few more signals to stretch across things. You can see some down in here, okay? And they do that just to, uh, instead of adding more layers to the card, uh, they just do it that way. That's just for an evaluation, right? Okay, it looks like a soft start enable here. And that's the switch there. Uh, these two cores, they're PTC cores. They're, they're optimized for magnetic field for EMI for the window opening to make it easy to wrap a wire, to wrap wires or whatever around it. And so instead of an E core where you just have a bar run through here, it flares out and they call it a PQ core. And that's the same as this one down here. This is the main transformer. And this is the other L. So it says L1, kind of a giveaway. T2, T2 is up here. So this is our LLC. I'm sure these are the Cs. So our control chip here, and these are our switching transistors, right? On the heat sink right here. So the loop, the power comes in and then it just loops around from this input bulk capacitor through the transformer through these LLCs. So. There's our power loop on the primary side. On the secondary side, look at these big heat sinks. It's pretty neat. PCB mounted right to it with a transistor on either side. So there's two of them. So, so I'm sure these are our diodes. You can see D1 down here. So uh, they could be synchronous FETs, but they're diodes in this case. Uh, and here's our these are really nice caps. These are aluminum polymer type caps. You see, they don't have the the crease in the top where it weakens it. So if they explode, they can pop the top like the aluminum electrolytic right here. You see the creases over here, the aluminum electrolytics, you see the creases on top. So the other thing with aluminum electrolytics like this, there'll be like a rubber bung or bung or whatever they call it on the underside. And that's where it breathes. That's why they dry out. But these do not dry out. These are awesome caps. Okay. And then look at this inductor. This inductor is a flat wire inductor. See how low profile it is? That's, that's super awesome if you're going to mount it on this side. Uh, on this side, doesn't matter because you have all the tall components. But... They did it just to show you the coolness effect, I think. Just show you what's possible. If you want to put low profile, lay this down on a board. And you can lay these down on a board and heat sink them a different way. 
but you do have the tall, tall magnetics, right? But if you wanted to put some of these parts on the bottom side and heat sink on the bottom, you could do that with all these other top parts and just leave the magnetics on top or use the heat sinks like you have. I don't know if you're gonna need some airflow to help with these things, but anyway, there's just different options on how you're gonna cool. It's really efficient, so you don't have to worry about cooling too much. So there you go. There's a UCC 25600 EVM-001 eval card, all right? Pretty darn cool, lots of test points everywhere really neat guys really excited to power this thing up and start playing with it all right guys so i'm really excited about this i want to thank ti a big thumbs up to ti thanks ti thank you very much we're gonna have fun with this so the jet audio power supply other power supplies we're going to convert this to a jet but first we'll test this one we'll get a good feel for it and you'll see, like, if you have your own voltage or your own power supply you want to design, using the PFC converter that, from the other TI eval card that I've done a bunch of videos on, and I've showed a bunch of different ways to design different parts of it, uh, really tried to do a bunch of videos on that so that if people are interested, they can go around, look at the different videos, and get a really good feel. This one, we're going to do something similar, okay? And then we'll... I'll show you how to convert this to practically any design you want to do within a certain power range, okay? So, really excited. Thanks so much, TI. All right, guys, two big thumbs up to TI and two big thumbs up to my patrons and my YouTube members. Uh, I've got, I think, 10 now. That's awesome. And two big thumbs up to Danny. He's my only team member. Thanks so much. Being a team member is pretty special. So I'm going to write up some things and do some, I'm going to do a little pamphlet or something. I'm going to send out to all my team member or, you know, to my YouTube members and also to my patrons. So uh, the paying patrons, I didn't know there was a way where you could be a non-paying patron, but some people are that way. And patron has reasons for doing that. They're hoping that they'll become paying patrons. But anyway, so the the patrons who are paid to join the channel and that I'll send out that pamphlet, but you guys will see the videos. If you watch the videos, you'll know it all. The pamphlet just be a kind of a note sheet, you know, be a guide that you can do yourself by watching all the videos. So it's not really necessary. It'll just be something that I can do special for the people who, you know, pay to play. <laughs> hey, thanks guys. You can, uh, support for free just by subscribing and hitting the like button and uh, also buy me a cup of coffee if you want or a beer for a rant Friday um, or not Friday but a rant you know a rant video Fridays are my tech talk days so I might miss one here and there but yeah sorry I'll try to keep them on Fridays but yeah guys and then also you become a member of patreon for as little as a dollar a month down below but I really appreciate you and TI, they, you saw the other boxes they sent me? I'll do another video and talk about what those are, okay? Because there's some really cool stuff. So, yeah, it's, I'm, you might be able to tell I'm kind of excited. So, <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.